Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 4, Drivers of Reactions. This is video number 13 and we're going to look at just some of the generalizations around entropy that are going to help us to predict some of the uh, entropy changes that might be occurring in different types of systems. The first thing we need to do is to, I guess, look at some general rules relating to entropy. Firstly, and I guess most importantly, when temperature is increasing, what we're doing is adding kinetic energy to the particles. Because the particles are now moving faster, there is uh, a greater number of uh, different patterns, different arrangements. And because there are a larger number of potential arrangements, then we have an increase in the entropy. When substances are going from ordered substances, such as solids, through to liquids, which are taking the shapes of their containers, and then through to gases, we are increasing in entropy. The arrangement, the ordered arrangement, is becoming more disordered, and that is the definition of entropy. So therefore, as we shift from solid to liquid to gas, we are increasing um, our entropy. If we have a certain number of particles in a system and we are to and then we decide we're going to add other particles to the system, then we're increasing the arrangement of particles or at least the potential ways in which these particles could be arranged and therefore we are going to increase our um, entropy. And finally, if we have a substance which uh, is soluble in water and we decide that we are going to add it to water, as we add it to the water, the particles start to um, dissociate and so they start to spread themselves out through um, the water. This is increasing the entropy of the system. So there's a couple of important things for us to be keeping in mind when we're doing our analysis of different systems. And obviously, the best way to do this is to pick a system and see what we can uh, come up with. So simplest thing for us to look at here is water vapor condensers, which means H2O gas goes to h 2 O liquid. Now I guess one of the, the ways that we can do this is to simply say that the particles of the gas are going to take up more space and therefore uh, when you compress them together, when they get closer together in the liquid form, we're going to become more ordered and therefore we're going to decrease our entropy. Uh, or entropy is going delta S is a negative. What's another way of looking at that? Well, another way of looking at that is that at standard laboratory conditions, we know there's water vapor in the air. We also know that one mole of any gas at STP occupies a volume of 24.79 litres. So our gas is going to occupy 24.79 litres if it is in the gas phase, if it's absorbed, if it's um, water droplets, water vapour in the atmosphere, it's going to occupy a volume of 24.79. However, in the liquid, we know that one gram um, is equivalent to one mil because the density of water is one gram per mil. We also know that uh, we can work out the molar mass of water, uh, two lots of 1.008, 2.016, and one lot of 16, gives us 18.016 grams, or a volume of 18.016 mils. This is considerably less than our volume of gas at standard laboratory conditions. 
So if water is in the liquid phase at uh, room temperature, then it will only occupy, one mole of it will only occupy 18.016 millilitres. However, that same one mole uh, distributed through the atmosphere will occupy a volume of 24.79 litres. This is in a, an order of magnitude of 10 to the 3. So this is a big, big difference in the distribution of particles as a consequence of the different um, states. So it's not just that we should have some general rules in our head about the degree of organisation of different particles in different states and in chemical reactions, but also the fact that some of the rules that we've learnt about uh, solids, liquids and gases can also help us understand something about entropy change. Thanks for watching.